Hi everyone, in this video we are going to see how to recreate the knurling of the knobs on this object. While those knobs are easy to do, those ones are a bit more tricky. And the reason why is because there is a little geometry here that prevents you from doing the knurling which goes until the top without uh, having something which is a bit messed up here. So we will see here how to, to do it in uh, surfaces in Rhino. Okay, so let's start by duplicating the knob here. So as you can see here that the way the knurling is made is, is like a little uh, indent inside which goes um, like this and it's just multiplied all around the object in one way and in the other way. And this little indent is actually an extruded uh, triangle that flows along a curve. So we're going to create this little triangle at the top and the curve which we will use as, as a ray. So let's go on the top here and let's create a triangle like this. Select the top point and align it in the middle. So you can use the set point tool like this. So align the triangle with the middle of the object here and bring the triangle up. So it's important that the triangle is a bit outside of the object. Then we're going to create the curve that we'll use to extrude this um, triangle. And for that, we're going to use the Elix tool that we can find here. So the Elix tool is usually made for creating sp spring shapes. So for example, you use place the first point of the spring in the last point like this. And if you want a spring, normally you would do something like this. But here we don't want a shape that goes many times around the object. We only want something that goes from here to the bottom like this. So instead of having 10 turns, we can put 0 0.25 turns, so a quarter of a turn, like this. And then we can align the top with the middle of our triangle, like this. And the idea will be to sweep this curve along this one. So from the side view, align your triangle to the top of the curve we just created. And then we want to bring this a bit bigger, to have this a bit bigger. So that as it is using, as it is acting as a cutting tool, it has to go further than the object we want to cut. Okay, so now let's use the sweep one tool, select the rail and then select the cross section, press enter twice and then we want to use the road like frame style so that the pointy bits always uh, point towards the middle of the object. Then we're going to close the shape And with the polar array, we're going to multiply it by a certain amount to create lots of little indents. So polar array. So let's say we want 20 of them. Let's try. So maybe 20 is not enough, so let's try 25. Like this, okay, enter. And then we're going to group to select all of the shapes that we created without the shape in the middle. And then we're going to group them. And then we're going to duplicate it and reverse it. So control C, control V, and then you mirror it by scaling it of minus one in one di direction. And finally, we want to use the Boolean difference 
to, to cut the shape with the shape. So also if you remember in the reference picture it does nothing doesn't go until the bottom so so we want to have our cutting shape that starts not at the bottom of the object but rather here. So let's move this here. And then we can use the boolean tool. So I would recommend to use so boolean difference, but first do it with one direction. So enter, and then you select one direction. And then you do it with the other direction. And now if we move the knob, we can see that it created an earning. So here, maybe you're not happy with the with the proportion of the knurling. So the way you can change that is by either changing the shape of the triangles, or either by uh, scaling this. Uh, so for example, let's redo it. Instead of having something like this, we can probably scale it like this. bit more so let's start again the process and here it's much better already So if you want that it stops here, because I think it stops on the reference picture. Yeah, it stops like this. So you are just going to cut this to trim it. So, so remove this. And trim, trim the object. at a crossing point. Trim. And don't forget to close your object with the cap command. Like this. So the advantage of this technique is that, as you can see, it's, it looks very clean and also the transition here, so if you put rendered, is much better than um, if you would put a displacement map where it would simply um, not join this surface with the outer surface.